Satan fall from heaven as a star, which means he, he didn't say maybe Satan's going to be kicked out. Perhaps he's going to be kicked out. He said, I saw it. And in the future, he could see that. And then immediately following that, in about verse 19, he said, I give you power over serpents. That's Satan even. That's his children. And scorpions, I give you power over all of your enemies, so you better be able, being the topic of this uh, particular lecture, to be able. You have no excuse for not being able, because he gave it to you naturally in his name. We're going to go through and we're going to pick up a few places, and then we're going to go to some of the signs of the end and let you know why you'd better be able. Okay, so if you would open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, as we ease into this, knowing that Christ has already given us the power over all of our enemies, certainly we have nothing to worry about. These are the Beatitudes, but it's what follows this that I want to, I want to draw attention to. We'll pick it up about verse 10, Matthew chapter 5, a word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name, and it reads, Blessed or happy are they which are uh, persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, blessed are those that are persecuted for doing what's right, for following the word of God, not man's word, but God's word, the kingdom belongs to you. You got nothing to fear, everything to look forward to. You're blessed because you're able. Verse 11, blessed or happy are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. That's your key word. Lying, in other words, that's what the word in the Greek manuscripts is lying about you for my name's sake, for my sake. That is to say, for Christ's sake, for the word's sake. You teach the word and don't you ever apologize for it. Don't let God take a back seat to anybody and don't, don't allow anyone else to place him there because you're able. You've been given the authority and the power gives it. You are able, okay? Verse 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Boy, did they give them what for, you know? Look what they, look what they put old Jeremiah through. And look what they even put our Savior, Jesus Christ, through. They nailed him to a cross and you think you've got it rough? Oh my. Don't ever be a poor me baby when God has given you the authority to stand up and act like a Christian. Okay, you're not a second class citizen. Don't act like it. Verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted it is there thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now, I want, you, I want to draw your attention to the word seva here and, um, because it's an interesting word. It means you're not able, okay? Because the, the word in the Greek is morenio, morenino, which is to say, um, do you realize the word moron comes from that? Our English word moron comes from that. It means to become, make yourself a simpleton. If you know the truth, if you're salty, and you know the truth and you're spiced up for action, that is to say as far as the truth is concerned, and you allow your savor, the flavor, to leak out, to become a, a marshmallow, a wet noodle, that you can't stand up for Christ and truth and what is right and righteousness, then you know what you're good for? Nothing. 
Good for nothing. God likes can do to be able people. So that's what he's warning you about here. You're blessed all over the place. You're blessed in truth. You're blessed because you have a seed in the kingdom. You're blessed because you're persecuted for doing what's right. Don't lose it. Don't give it up, especially when the spurious Messiah comes. Okay? Just let it be all washed away and dissolved into nothingness. You are able, you stay able. And uh, so there, sometimes man without God is not able. You understand that's what happened there. You are the salt, but you lost it. Don't lose it. You lose it when you let Christ leave your life. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. In other words, your very spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit within you, is a light. And that light shines into a, a deceived world. People are hungry for answers, for reasons, for clarity. You have it. Give it to them. Let that light shine. When, and you might say, well, I only have a chance to talk to one person. You think they're not worth it? Who are you that you would judge? One person is worth it. And when the main moment comes for you as the witness against the spurious one, head on, face to face, that's when you're going to have to be able, and that's when you could lose your slave, uh, flavor if you're not careful, okay? But you're not, because I think, I bet some of you in here even want to tell the devil where to go. Wouldn't be surprised a bit. Okay, verse 15. Neither do men <clears throat> light a candle and put it under a bushel. What good would that do? You couldn't see it. What a waste. But, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. In other words, you're a blessing to all in the house. Why? The Spirit shines forth from you. You don't have to open your mouth. If it comes down to it, it's there. And the Holy Spirit witnesses itself. And it lifts people up. Uh, your presence, because of the Holy Spirit being within you, and always remember that it's a very humbling effect rather than making you think you're somebody. Not you, it's the Spirit, okay? Your Spirit and the Holy Spirit. Don't ever forget it. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Did it say, let them see your good works so they can glorify you? No. It said, let them see your good works so they can glorify our Father, their Father which is in heaven. Because he is the one that brings these blessings forth. He is the one that blesses us. We are servants. We are nothing compared to his being his love because he's the one that makes us able, makes us be able to cut it. We can plow anywhere. We don't have to be afraid of anything when you use common sense because someone that uses common sense always stays in control. You do that by knowing the future because you know what's down the road and all that man fears is the unknown. So how do you alleviate that then? By knowing. You, you erase the unknown factor and take charge. Be able. To be able means to take this word of God and let it be the seal of truth that you place in your forehead, your mind, and you relish it. Don't you lose it. You fought for it. You hang on to that truth. It's valuable because it gives you the authority to be able to conquer and to assist our brethren that are lost and confused in this world. To be able. What a wonderful thing. 
What a great gift from God that we have that. Skip on with me to chapter 8 in this same book of Matthew. Chapter 8. Let's pick it up with verse 28. Verse 28 of chapter 8, great book of Matthew reads, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs exceeding furious, so that no man might pass by that way. No man was able. Now, this is, this is where the pressure comes on, my friend. This word might in the Greek is iskuas, iskuas. And, and it means mighty. It means to be able. But here, no man was able. Now, let me tell you something. If there had been one Christian near after the power was given and he exercised it, he would have been able. Meaning what, what factor was missing? They didn't have Christ. And you leave Christ out of your life and you'll be just as helpless. Absolutely just as helpless of anything that is negative or evil. It's amazing to me how some really brave people allow some negative thing into their house to destroy their family. And they don't fight it. They just, like a wet noodle, allow it to happen. Let Satan just come on in, boy. Our family can be had. We can be messed with. We'll be fighting in a minute if you tempt us. Don't let that happen to you. Be able to stand and throw anything negative. Order it out of your home. Don't tolerate it. So here we have these two. I mean, they're possessed. Do you think they were bad people? No, it was what they were possessed with. And you've been given power over anything that possesses. You don't have to worry about it. Verse 29, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? It wasn't the two men talking. That's the devils. Why? They knew him. Satan knows Christ. He didn't say, who are you? What are you doing here? They called him by name. They called him the Son of God. And they called him Yahweh's Savior in, in the Hebrew tongue through the Greek translated. So here, we're, we're not supposed to be tossed out of here until it's time. Time for what? For their daddy to arrive. For Satan to fall from heaven. To, to let them have their heyday until that time. Or unless a Christian comes along that knows what to do about it. It makes their life kind of short and they run from you. They're afraid of you. But you've got to exercise the authority. Uh, do you know anybody that's afraid of a wet noodle? I don't. People eat them. Okay. Wet noodles are fit for nothing. So anything negative comes around, you put a stop to it now. Nip it in the bud. Don't let it take root. Not in your family. Don't let it grow. Stop it. In the name of Jesus. Verse 30. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. Lowest carnal flesh in the world. Okay. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. Now, what can you ascertain from that statement? They didn't have power over Christ, did they? They said, If you cast us out. They knew he could do it. There wasn't any question about it. And do you know something? If you be a Christ man, that's Christian, they know the same thing of you, Unless you're a wet noodle. They know you have the authority and the power to do the same. Because he gave it to you. Luke 10, 19 through 20. Verse 32. And he said unto them, Go. 
That means get out. And, and he allowed them to go into the swine. Lowest carnal flesh, showing sure, they're not very particular who they possess, all right? Uh, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. What does that say to you? Analyze it. It says that a demon can't even possess a hog and rule it. You understand? They, they wouldn't allow it. They ran in the river and drowned themselves. Okay? The sea, that is to say. In other words, they couldn't overpower the thinking of a hog. And would you ever consider letting them overpower your thinking? Putting up with nonsense. Putting up with that that Satan would love to see your family just fighting and scraping the walls with each other over who squeezed the toothpaste the wrong way. I mean, really serious, heavy stuff to get you fighting about it or disagreeing or arguing with it. Don't let him do that to you, okay? But I don't like the way she opens the wieners. Now listen, you, you know, that's kind of humorous, but I know a family that attended this church, and I'm not saying still does, you'll have to guess. They'd shoot me if I told you. They split up over how the wieners were opened. And because they were incompatible anyway, okay? But, you know, you gotta take charge. You can't be a wet noodle. You gotta be able. And, you know, if, if swine and hogs can overpower a demon, what are you? Okay. Don't, I mean, I mean, take charge. I mean, don't have, don't allow it. You don't have to. And they that kept them fled. It scared them. It frightened them. And when their way, and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. I mean, they were, the whole town was afraid of those two. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. They didn't want anything to do with him. Do you know why? Money. That was their living, the hogs. And the hogs be dead. <laughs> They're gone, okay? So you can see how that Man without Christ always chooses wrong, as they did. There they had the protector of protectors. The one whereby um, uh, Ecuas, he had the authority and the might to handle those demons. The worst two Satan could send, as bad as Satan could send. And he just, I mean, zapped them. And many people are going to say, well, why didn't he send them back where they came from? Because he gave you authority to send them back where they came from. And he expects you to do it. Okay? Anything negative, anything that can destroy your home, get rid of it. Clean house. And don't mess with it. Nip it in the bud. Don't give it time to root jerk it out by the roots and throw it out and you'll have a lot happier home, okay? Now, uh, let's go to a case where two men without Christ decided they were going to clean the house. Acts chapter 19. If you do not have the faith to believe that God has given you the power to overcome serpents, demons, uh, scorpions, anything negative, all your enemies is what he gave you power over. If it's your enemy, you got it. You're able. Don't ever forget that. With Christ, here's what happens to you without him. Okay, this is, pick it up in Acts chapter 19, 
Paul was working some wonderful things, but God was doing it. You understand? Verse 11, let it sink in real good. And God wrought, who did? God wrought special miracles by, uh, by the hands of Paul. Was it Paul that was doing it? Absorb that. Let it sink in your head because that's where you'll get in trouble if you don't understand it's God that does it through you. Okay. Okay. You'll, you'll, you'll get out and get yourself frostbit by demons. They will eat you alive. I, I don't want to frighten anybody. There's not one behind every bush, but I tell you, however few they are out there, they want God's elect. You got that? They want you because they got everybody else. They're after you, so don't ever let your guard down. Right? And so don't ever forget who it is that works the miracles. It's our Father. We're just servants, but boy, are we able, okay? Why? We believe His Word. We have faith in it. Verse 12, so that from His body were brought into the sick hand handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The, what some people call demons, okay? But they are evil spirits. That's what they are, all right? 13, listen to this carefully. Unprepared people. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, this, this from uh, Genesis chapter 4, 12, you know what curse was put on Cain. He'd be a vagabond all the days of his life. And these are people claiming to be our brother Jude, Judah, but they're Kenites. They were exorcists. I mean, that was their business, was to cast out demons, okay? Took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Now, do you think that'll work? Whom Paul preacheth? Weren't they preaching him? No, they weren't. They didn't have him. So you're looking at people that do not have the authority. Okay. You're looking and reading about people here that are not able because they do not have Christ. Okay. Verse 14. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priest. I mean, he was head of the synagogue, which did so. He, he was one of the ones that did it. Verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, do you understand? I, I, I don't know how many of you and how deep you are and how much you know, but they do speak. When you hear a person that you recognize their voice because they're a friend of yours and they speak in another voice, tone, you better sharpen up. They're only using the vocal cords of that person. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Now that, you know, uh, and you know what then the demons did to him? Verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house um, um, and um, naked and wounded. Now, the word prevailed here again is iskuyo, is to say able, okay? The demons were able to overpower the people. Why? They didn't have Christ. They didn't have the authority. Why? They had no faith. They were not believers. But they sure wanted to do what Paul was doing as God was working those miracles through him to be able they, I mean, after all, they were exorcists. Work day after day to get rid of one, never any success. Well, we'll just do, we'll try this a little different angle. We'll do it in the name of Jesus. But you have to have Jesus in here to have the authority. You have to be a believer, in other words. Uh, so uh, there you have it, not able. The demons were able to overpower the average person without God, okay? 
I mean, they chewed them up. They were uh, wounded and naked when they left that house. Verse 17, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. God used this evil experience to show without him you're not able. And people sure wanted to have that power and that authority which God had wrought through Paul to be on the right track. Verse 18, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Showed their deeds. Okay, they were able. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. It took all their witchcraft tools and got rid of them, okay? Um, verse 20, so mightily, there's the word you want in this 20th verse, mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It prevailed again is Ishua, which is to say able. And it's what will make you able. That's what the Greek word is. I mean a person that is able and can cut it. No wet noodle, no poor me baby, no sad stories. Get it on. Okay. Take care of your place, your house, your business, your affairs. And do it with a mighty hand, the hand, mighty hand of God backing you. And never apologize for the word of God. So... There you have a case of where two people decided to mimic, or some people decided to mimic the mighty works of God without Christ. Don't ever try that. You'll fall on your face. I'll guarantee you, coming out the gate, God will see to it, okay? Now, I want you to go with a, to a chapter in conclusion, Luke 21 which you're all familiar with this chapter. Luke chapter 21 is the equivalent, only it's a, instead of a front shot, it's a profile shot, I'm speaking as of cameras, of the end times. Luke 21 is where Luke gives you Matthew 24 and Mark 13 about the seven seals and so forth only it, again it gives you a profile shot where you can you take the two and overlap and you have a little more information but this is where you are told you're going you, you know I started out by telling you in Luke 10 19 just um, uh, here a little before this uh, God said, Jesus said, rather, the Father through the Son, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. I'm sending him. I'm going to have Michael kick him out. That's documented in Revelation chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, for your information. You're going to have him on your back, but I give you power over him. Now, that's fair, isn't it? That's fair. It, it proves whether you're a believer or not. Because if you believe, you've got nothing to worry about. If you don't believe, you've got Satan on your back, all right? It's that simple. But he went on and he told how he can't harm one hair on your head. So, and, and yet, Bible believers are afraid of Satan. I don't understand it. It just does not make sense to me. If you believe the word of God, he promises you, you have power over him. He's afraid of you if you exercise that power. And he can't harm one hair of your head. And besides that, if you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you when he appears, when Satan is appearing as Christ before, to deceive your friends, he's not going to deceive you. At the sixth trump, not the seventh. That's when the true Christ comes. But at the sixth trump, he's going to deceive a lot of people, but there's no way he can deceive you. And your point is to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you without you even premeditating, because it's not you speaking, but the Spirit. Now, I want to pick this up after that fact 
to the subject of to be able. Can you cut this? I mean, that's heavy duty stuff, isn't it? You standing against Satan and it being broadcast to the world, and it's going to be, okay? Revelation declares it. The whole world will see. Well, how do they see? The same way the whole world can see us right here now, okay? So there's, that would have been unbelievable 50, uh, 70 years ago, but it's not today. You push one button, you're around the world. So anyway, um, you have to be able. That's why it's so important. But I think it's, every, occasionally you need to say, what time is it and where are we in all this? So to be able, I want to pick up on that thought in this Luke 21, I want to pick it up with verse uh, 25. After you've been told you're going to be delivered up to witness in the time of the Gentiles must, go th must come to pass, the days of vengeance, that is to say, in verse 24, um, verse 25, let's pick it up for signs. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Do you know what waves roaring is? It's a tsunami. Okay. It's, it is Lake Pontchartrain going over the walls in New Orleans and wiping out a whole city. We're not talking about little stuff here. And God hears the children cry out, and there were many children crying out in the area of the tsunami. He heard. That was the waves roaring. And God has a way of sending signals. This Mars, closest to the Earth as it's ever been in I don't know when. Now, what is my more planet? When does that, what does that mean? Well, that and $2 will get you a cup of coffee unless you go to Starbucks. Okay? <laughs> but anyway, um, you're having these unusual things in the world today, and they're beefed up. Look what happened in Illinois and Kentucky today, Indiana and Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana and Kentucky. I mean, there was a tornado went through there in November, which is not, it's unusual, but it's not unheard of. And that baby tore up Jake. I think there's about 20 dead so far. You know, I mean, it wiped out a motor home park, and that's bad. Hit at two o'clock, first time of the day, two o'clock in the morning. And, but anyway, we're, these storms of all kinds, hurricanes, um, tsunamis, earthquakes, it's not normal, my friend. These, the, you know, we even went into the Greek alphabet to name hurricanes this year. And that's kind of, that, since we've been keeping records, well, what does that mean? It means it's never happened before, and he's, God has warned you these things will grow closer and closer like labor pains. Well, boy, I'll tell you what, with terrorism, it isn't just part of the world. France itself, who kind of really gave us a hard time about cleaning out Iraq, who are they getting a lesson this last 10 days? I mean, it, they're, they're, uh, France, uh, Paris is burning, you know, and it's kind of sad, isn't it? But no one is immune to terrorism. And, um, well, are we back to the time of the Crusaders? Well, I hope not, but hey, um, if you catch a Crusader flick tonight, you might ought to watch it, History Channel. Are you advertising another network? No, I just said... You might watch the Crusaders tonight, okay? It's what happened between the cross and the Muslim sign. Old history, is it playing again? Well, you better watch it, okay? There will be signs, signs in the, I'm looking for it, the sun, 
and in the moon and in the stars and up on the earth. Distress of nations, they are distressed. Trains being blown up, innocent people dying. For what reason? Pure Satanist. Well, are you blaming a religion? No religion would allow that to happen. Not the, the Muslim religion would not allow, the Muslim religion would not allow that to happen. But there are cults embedded therein that will sure do it, okay, around the world. And perplexity, people really are perplexed. They're wondering. Do you understand that's why now that sometimes, and I probably shouldn't say this, we're on, we're on television, but 1,700 new people a day? You know, that, that really, that pushes our crew hard. But people are hungry for truth. They're hungry for the Word of God and to be able, okay? So these things, my friend, are coming to pass and you're living it. You want to stay awake, okay? Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And guess who's, who was shaken out to come here? Satan, of course. Verse 27, and then and not until then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Only after those things will Christ return. That's at the seventh trump. Everything prior to this happens in the sixth trump in this chapter. Verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's at the door. Verse 29, and he spake to them a parable. He's going to talk to you in a language that you can understand. Be, uh, behold the fig tree and all the trees. Do you know what there's un unusual about the fig tree? You don't plant a seed. You set out a shoot, okay? It's already got leaves when it's set out, all right? The shoot. Verse 30. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is, nigh, is now nigh at hand. When leaves start coming forth, know that you're getting close to harvest time. You're gonna, you're gonna have something happen, okay? Now, in the parable of the fig tree, that happened in the year of our Lord, 1948, as Jeremiah 24 so aptly declares that the good and bad figs were set out in the year of our Lord, 1948, when the nation was founded again. First time since Titus blew it away in 70 AD, okay? Verse 31, so, so it's not something that happens every day. You understand? That's why I say that. It happened in your generation, my generation. Some of you weren't even born then, okay? We had to change your diapers before then. But that's okay. That's okay. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. That's a good sign if you're able. Why? Because the kingdom is partly yours. He said, you inherit it. You take part in it. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not, I repeat, shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Doesn't give you the moment or anything else, but it lets you know the generation beginning in 1948 will not pass away until all these signs are history, complete. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. My word is, God is the same in the first earth age. He is in this earth age, and he will be in the future. He never changes. That's why you can count on him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And when you study this word, you're studying a word that you're going to live eons of time with. That's forever and ever and ever. Verse 34, 
and take heed. You be real careful to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. It slips up on you. It's going to happen. Verse 35, for as a snare, that's a trap, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. How many? All, because it's going to be worldwide. Verse 36, watch ye therefore, you are watchmen, my friends, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, that you are able to stand, that you are able, capable, that you can cut it. You're not a wet noodle. You're a child of God. Act like it. And stand up to be counted. Show them. You know, it's real sad, but some people turn that into the rapture. They say, you want to pray that you can escape because you're going to fly away. God's not looking for flyaway artists. He's looking for people that can stand. Standing. What do you put the gospel armor on for? Ephesians chapter 6. Does it say to put put away? No, it says to stand. To be worthy to stand and to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. Why? You have power over him. You can cut it. You can do it. Do it. Don't allow Satan to have an inch in your life. You don't have time for it. You don't even have to say it out loud. In Jesus' name, get out of here. Get back where you came from. You don't even have to say it out loud. When you walk into a building and you have discern spiritual discernment, you can feel it. And you know there's something negative here. You can sense it. You don't even have to say it out loud. Order it out. Take charge. You're a child of God. Never apologize for the Word of God. You know, I had a, a difficult time learning as a new Christian when people would come and say, I know this person has a demon. No, it's just a negative spirit. Certainly just a negative spirit. And then whenever I counseled as a young pastor, and told this person they were mistaken. You don't, have a, you don't have an evil spirit. You just have a little problem. Then at 1 o'clock that morning, every morning for three mornings, I woke up with an anvil weighing a ton in my chest and, and ordered it in the name of Jesus out and then laughed myself silly at myself for thinking there could be such a thing. You know, the second time it happened, I didn't laugh quite as hard at myself. The third time, I asked God for forgiveness, and I've never had any trouble with it since then. You know, so there's not one behind every bush, and it's something you don't want to get paranoid about, okay? But you live in a real world, and there's a war between Satan in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've chosen sides. Make sure you're able to stand and that you're worthy and that you can do, all right? No wet noodles, please. We all have our moments and we all have bad moments at times, but pick each other up and plow just a little deeper next time and it won't happen. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege of serving you. Thank you, Father, for capable people for people that can do. Thank you, Father, for leading, giving us that power and that authority to be gentle and to exercise that in love and with love, your love, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. 
There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. Now, it could be that if you wanted to give a love offering, 50 cents, okay? Uh, and I'm, I'm saying that because uh, there was one person one time only had two mites. That's all she had. And she gave that. That's a love offering. That wasn't a tithe. And God said that woman gave more than all those money bags over there that are falling in. She gave more because she gave all that she had. So don't, don't let them rankle you or cause your children to go without food just because they wear a collar, maybe turned around, or claim to be a reverend. There's nothing reverend about somebody that will take a single mom and rob her babies. I've got a name for somebody like that. I don't think that, uh, I don't think our congregation would appreciate it, but my congregation is familiar enough with this old combat Marine. They know what I think about a preacher that would do that. Tyrone from Texas. In Ezekiel, where it says we will be able to cross over and help our relatives, I want to know where will they be and will they be aware of their surroundings? Oh, you bet they will be. They're, they're in the millennium age, okay? And they're right where, you know, we just finished Ezekiel and it showed you the outlay. But those that uh, are misplaced temporarily trying to make their mind up whether they're going to be in the eternity or go to hell, you can go help them. You know, don't, don't let that be a surprise to you that you can go help them. We just finished the first epistle of John. What did God say about intercessory prayer? He says, do it. Help them. And help, help that brother. Help that friend. Help that neighbor. Pray for them. You know, God, God, it is God's will that all come to repentance. He doesn't get any pleasure out of sending anybody to hell, but he has to. Okay. But if there's any possibility, he wants them to be maintained. So they're, they're there in the millennium age. And uh, uh, again, uh, Christ kind of told us in the parable, and it is a parable of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16. Kind of what that would be like. Reread it. Uh, Tony from Virginia. What scripture says the famine of the last days would be for the word of God instead of food? Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. I think it's 11. Lois from Georgia. Is, <clears throat> is butter a good food? It's the only thing I'll eat when it, you know, it's, it's, uh, Good old fresh butter is, uh, you know, you can kind of, a lot of people like to use imitations of this and imitation of that and imitation of something else. And synthetic sometimes don't dissolve too quickly. And sometimes you can get, um, you know, sometimes we use those synthetics to patch an inner tube when we get it flat on our car. So sometimes those synthetics can not be too healthy. Okay. It was, I can remember back in, in um, um, prior to World War II, was it? Or during World War II when we, you got margarine and then you got a little package of yellow covering, coloring and you mixed it in to where it looked like butter. It wasn't. And they claimed that changed a lot of people's sexuality. Now did it? I don't know. But uh, something sure did, didn't it? Anyway, uh, is butter a good food? You bet. It's the real thing. I, that's what I'm for is the real thing. I am a realist. Judy from Georgia. What is a religious spirit? Boy, you could, 
you know, it's according to religion covers a lot of ground. I'm glad Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality, okay? Uh, there's the Holy Spirit, and there's Satan's spirit. Even it is a religion. Satan has a religion. So each individual has a spirit. I have a spirit. You have a spirit. And we can utilize that spirit in communicating with people, good or bad, okay? So uh, a religious spirit is not necessarily, I mean, you're, you're opening up a whole field there of how many religions are there in the world, and are they good or bad? If it's a religion that likes to kill innocent people, uh, it's a wicked, evil spirit, okay, and so forth. Uh, I think that's Lois, okay, from South Carolina. In regards to the rapture that people refer to, the dead in Christ shall be called first. Please explain. Well, God is the God of the living. You don't think they're out here in some hole in the ground, do you? And as it is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Lord. They're with him. Now, if they're already with him, did they go second? I mean, just think about it a minute. If they're already with the Lord, did they go first or did they go second? We're still here, and they're there. I call that first. Ryan from Texas. I have a staff member who is grieving over her child who was born in, with Down syndrome. Any thoughts or scripture to let her know this is not a curse from God or something she might have done uh, that God's punishing her for? We, we just, um, you know, I've always noticed uh, parents that receive a handicapped child. And in, in our earth today, we pollute the atmosphere. We, we have uh, toxic imbalances in almost everything. And, and it's nothing she did. But when this happens, I've always noticed that it happens to some of the best people in the world. They're kind, they're loving, and they love that child, and that child loves back. So uh, you tell her that the Lord has given her a beautiful gift and to thank the Lord for it. Yeah, sure. But in its innocence, they, you know, it will, th that child will do much good, but don't get on a guilt trip because of it. Praise God. And you know, uh, we have to play, I'm a, I'm a realist, we have to play the hand we're dealt. And God deals the hands, basically. But then, you know, we do, um, we do uh, pollute this earth and we have things like this happen, but it's, it's no one individual's fault. And it's certainly not a curse. God loves those little children. And God loves your, your uh, staff member. You tell them I love them also. It's going to be okay. Uh, Lois from Maryland. You said the tribulation was shortened to five months. I read that the two witnesses will be here longer. Is there contradiction in this? Or am I not following it correctly? If one thing is shortened, everything is shortened. If God shortens time, why? Because God is always fair. If he shortens the negative time, he will shorten the positive time so that it all comes out at the same point in time. We know that he promised he would shorten the time in uh, Mark chapter 13. He said, if I don't shorten the time, there won't be any flesh saved. But that, that's how convincing that the spurious Messiah is. So naturally, if he shortens everything as he did to a five month period in Revelation chapter nine, that's as it is in accordance. But always remember this, the two witnesses were given 1,260 days, that's daylight. The devil is given 42 months. That, both of those are three and a half years. But solar is longer than moons. So the two witnesses still have a little bit of an edge, okay? Because, um, uh, because of the, fa the rotation. Christ 
Christian from Arkansas. Uh, we're, Christine, I'm sorry, Christine from Arkansas. Where in the Bible does it talk about the armament of God? The gospel armor, I'm going to assume you're thinking of, uh, of, that God states his children must wear, you will find in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. And why do you put the gospel armor on? It has, has one purpose, so that you can stand against the fiery darts of Satan when he comes as the spurious Messiah, okay? You don't have any problem. It's a breeze, piece of cake for God's own, okay? Glenda from, Michigan, from Minnesota. A voodoo man put a curse on my family. How can we get this curse off? Hey, you know, you're a Christian family. The voodoo man cannot put a curse on you. He doesn't have that kind of power. He'd like to make you think he can. In the name of Jesus Christ, you order his little tricks right back upon him. Ricochet like a bullet and hit him right where it hurts, okay? Don't, don't let somebody do that to you. You have Christ, you have the power, you have the victory. Bounce it back to him. That evil spirit, in Jesus' name, may it be over for you, and it is done. Okay, um, we're in a battle, a war, and we win, always, in Christ. I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all a lot because why? You love the Lord, you love his word. Most of all, God loves you for it. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've uh, helped you, keep, help us keep coming to you. Won't you do that? Bless God and do what? He will always bless you. Now, most important, this. Stay in his word. Every day in his word, even with trouble, it's still a good day. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you. Attention business owners, restaurants, tanning salons, carpet stores, retail stores of all kinds. Introducing AmeriMerchant, the new way to get up to $150,000 in working capital to grow your business. We advance money against your future Visa and MasterCard sales from your customers. To qualify, you must have at least $5,000 in Visa or MasterCard sales. No banks, no closing costs, and no fees. Call now, 800-870-0459. In the fight against cancer, doctors need the most powerful weapons possible. How's your veggie burger? Great. How's your salad? Super. Fruits, vegetables, and high-fiber vegetarian foods can help prevent cancer and other health risks. Visit cancerproject.org or call 866-906-WELL for a free booklet to find out more.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter.